This will need to be close to a wall. Let's crack on. Hello and welcome to another Mr. Beats Pipe video and this one's a little bit different insofar as we are looking at a Sony SL C30. Um, just notice that these doors aren't quite closing properly so we'll have a look at that but this is a repairing from robin uh hi robin hope all is well with you and that uh, hf100 is okay i know you've got problems with the alignment so uh i'll send you some info on that just now um but uh yeah this one um basically i think at some point it's been in a in an auction um i uh, an in-person auction the uh, reason I say that is because, as you may have spotted at the beginning, the mains lead is very, very short. And what they tended to do in, um, when electrical equipment was being auctioned, they'd chop off the mains lead and they have chopped it off. Um, could be wrong, but uh, that, that sort of is my feeling. Um, so the complaint with this is static. Um, now, static on picture um can mean all sorts of different things um it could mean that maybe those little caps in the power supply are dodgy uh it could mean the heads are worn it could mean we've got contamination um and electronics all sorts really so uh misalignment um or coils bad um on the rotaries could be could be a lot of things so yeah but with this um i also know the pinch roll is probably going to be bad um robin actually bought a hf100 off me several years ago um that was three years ago and um it looks like the pinch roll well the pinch roller failed on it um the bearings went um which is again not uncommon on these machines and um, I said, well, I can send you one, or as I'm having this for repair anyway, why don't you just whip off the, the pinch rod off this one, put it on the HF100, jobs are good. Un. And it was, but I believe he's still got some alignment issues because he tried to realign it, thinking that might have been the problem. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll send him some tips on that. Um, so with that... Um, I think the first thing I'm going to do is take the top off and just have a look. Um, then I think we'll sort out that mains lead and get a longer one on. I have actually got another one uh, from a, a 100, actually. Uh, not from 100, from a C30. Um, but it's the C30E. This is a UB, so the E has a Euro plug on, but that's fine. I'll just chop that off. And, uh, yeah, we'll get that fitted. So, uh, yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so um, immediately I can see there's no pinch roller, <laughs> which is a little bit of an issue because the spring's gone as well. Um, and I do have a lack of springs, so that's going to be an interesting one. Depending on the type of pinch roller fitted, there's, there's an early and a late type. Um, and they have unique springs for each type, so that's going to be interesting. Um, the upper drum looks very shiny, to be fair. Uh, I do wonder if we're going to have heads as an issue on this one. But the deck does look pretty tidy. Um, but slightly interesting idler there. Um, don't see those very often. I think that's an aftermarket. Um, the Sony one's all white on the top. Um, but hopefully it'll be all right. Should be okay. This has obviously been serviced at some point. Um, still got the tuning tool. I love this thing. So, um, push it in and you can tune it and you can actually see the little pointer moving on it. Sort of telling you, just telling you it's turning really. Um, totally redundant but it's nice to see it because they're, they're, they're just quirky I uh, really like it so um, I'm going to put a longer mains cable on this I think 
because um, it is, I don't know, am I going to put a mains cable on it? Because I'm going to have to change these caps anyway, but I want to see what the fault is first before I really start putting everything about. So I think what I might do is get an extension lead, just plug this in, um, and um, yeah, we'll give it a test. I'll try and find a pinch roller and spring set, and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Okay, so let's give it a test and just to see what we're up against, really. Um, we do have an extension lead, uh, so I'll plug it in uh, using that. So we have power, that's a good start. Um, and I'm not convinced with this front loading system at all. Um, yeah, it's not working at all, is it? That's, like, completely broken. Oh, dear. Um, it's going to need to sense that the tape's in. Gosh, that's really broken. Okay. <laughs> oh, you can see the doors are all wrong. Uh, yeah, I think we've got a broken gear there. But it is in. Well, I can say it's in. Yeah, that's not going to be good, is it? Okay, well, let's press play. Um, I'll hold the cassette down. So I've got a head clock. It's right, right to the start of this tape, and it's quite well used. Um, let's just try the tracking. Yeah, it's awful. Um, so, looking at that upper drum, I would say we have got worn heads. Um, bearings are not fantastic, but they're they're okay. They're passable. Um, I also think we've got, oh, rolling it now, oh, it's at the far end, that's why. I think we've also got capacitors in the power supply that are a little bit borderline, because you can see like patterning sort, sort of coming into the, um, the image there. So the, pa the um, little capacitors in the power supply. So there's that, there'll be the Hall Effect cleanup, of course, and we've got a bad front loading system as well. Um, and yeah, that's, that's really not great. So there's a lot to do on this machine. Um, is it worth doing? Well, in my book, yeah, absolutely. Um, these machines are pretty solid. Um, I want to change that mains lead as well, <laughs> which we will do. Um, but I think what I need to do is just get back to Robin and just let him know what's wrong with it. Um, and just see what he wants to do, basically. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's seen life, this machine. Um, I wouldn't be surprised that plastic gear on the bottom of, of this is also starting to crack. But you can see this is just terrible. Um... So let's let's try and eject. I I doubt it's gonna make it. Let's make sure it pulls back the. Oh yeah, it's completely broken. Um, to be fair, I think it's actually just come out. It's come out of the. Um... Oh yeah, that's that side's. 
that side stayed down. This is completely broken. Uh, yeah. So, um, well, I'll see what Robin wants to do. Um, I mean, this this was obviously, we can see it's still not right. Um, so, yeah, quite a bit needs doing. So, uh, I'll get into Robin and then hopefully we'll crack on. Let's crack on. <laughs> Several days later. So I've now had to go ahead to get this up and running and working as well as I can. So I have dug out a, a new front loading system. Uh, I think that one is actually perfect, although it will need a re-grease and a bit of a clean through. Um, but I think the first thing I'm going to do is actually change this mains cable because uh, this is just <laughs> not great. Um, while I'm about it, I might as well do the power supply caps as well. So uh, yeah, let's crack on. So it does look as if two of the caps have been changed previously, um, these two here. Um, I'm sure they should be the same value actually, uh, but those don't appear to be. I have to just check the circuit uh, circuit diagram. And they're certainly physically different. Um, but these two haven't been changed, so yeah, I'll get and do that next. Um, and uh, get this off as well. So. Yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so I was hearing and ahhing about this one, um, but um, I have decided to repurpose this from a, um, I think it was a C30E that was scrapped ages ago. Um, had a hard life, but the mains cable's good, so I'm going to reuse that. Um, getting this undone, I've got the proper tool for the, the, the round grommets, um, but this should. just allow me to uh, get this out like so so on these they've got little um well let's pull this out actually got little retaining little tabs or tab so this one pushes in this one just grips this doesn't get pushed in so it's, it's only that when you're pushing in and then it it will allow it to slide out you see there opens up and put this cable in and I think it is actually a little bit longer or maybe not so I think what I'll do I know that cable there is physically a little bit damaged but it's it's going to be inside the machine so I'm not terribly worried about that and uh, yeah, we'll squish this down and get it put put back in. Uh, I just want to give this all a clean first, so uh, yeah, I'll do that next. Okay, so 
Uh, make sure this is the right way so the threads sort of protrude that way. So that's the inside because uh, it goes like that. And put that through. And I don't want too much cable, but I need enough cable to comfortably get this in. So I'm going to go about there. Let's see where the original one is. I've trimmed these back a bit as well. Let's get a bit closer, maybe. And uh, start feeding this through. So it's the first time I've done it with one of these, so uh, we'll see how well we get on. Uh, which way? I actually want to go the other way, don't I? So it's tidy. Uh. And that should just clip in now. Once you get it started. That's it. That's in. Perfect. So. I've sort of prepared the live and the neutral ready to be soldered onto. Um, I've taken off the plastic shroud that's here and removed most of the glue. There's still a few bits there. I'm terribly worried about that. I will put some heat shrink on this. I've got some heat shrink that includes glue. Um, so it'll go on there really nicely and uh, be a good replacement for what was there before. So uh, yeah, so the next thing I can actually see, I don't know if you can see that, the corner of that's actually broken off, uh, which is not ideal. Don't know if I can get this off. This chip has been replaced at some point as well. So, uh, yes, it's not the best. But I should be able to uh, hopefully get round that crack by moving moving this up so it sort of misses the the uh, the crack the, the bit that's cracked and yeah we get some insulation so um, I suppose we ought to remove this side might as well as it's there you can see the wire underneath there the joins the two boards together, pull this down, lift this round, and there we have it all. Lots of lovely power supply. So uh, yeah, I'll uh, change those caps. And uh, oh, something bad's happened there. A little bit of contamination. I don't, don't know whether that cap is bad, maybe? There's a bit of green there as well. I think something's been going on there. Um, so yeah, I'll investigate that as well, I think. It's not looking good. Um, yeah, so let's crack on. So we are somewhere near. Um, new uh, cap, the 2200 microfarad cap. Um, I also changed the 22 here. I tend not to do this, it tends to not give problems, but um, we'll, well, we'll, we'll check it. But uh, it did have um, some contamination around its legs, so I thought, oh well, just change it. Um, cleaned up all the mess, cleaned up this side, still a bit of discoloration, but it's fine. And uh, yeah, I think we're somewhere near. Mains lead is on um, with its heat shrink this actually has glue in it as well so uh, like I say that will um, keep it oh, with some dust there get rid of that just now but uh, yeah giving it a good clean on my way round get that off um, but what I'm going to use because I'm not happy with that mica I couldn't really clean it without it 
breaking up. I could hear it sort of starting to break down. So I'm going to use one of these um, pads, which are supposed to be incredibly um, good at transmitting heat. So I'm going to give that a go, and uh, we'll see how we get on. But uh, yeah, I'll put this back together, and uh, we'll move on. So, all done, all back together, looking good. Um, peeled off the two plastic um, uh, covers on the heatsink mat, and that's on, which is great. I still, I still miss some dust there, honestly. Um, so, the next thing is cutting this off, which I feel a bit sad about doing, but you can see it has actually had a bit of um, strain there anyway um, the rest of the cable's fine I've given it a clean um, so to put a cable clip on there as well just just to uh, keep it nice and tidy uh, all new fuses as well um, capacitors uh, this one even though it's leaked it's obviously bad actually tested fine uh, which is I suppose good to know um, obviously it's got quite hot taking it out so that affects things but that tested fine all of these three tested fine um, these two replacements these are terrible um, low and incredibly high ESR so I think these were liberated out of some scrap electronics and uh, yeah there were just terrible to be honest but that's what happened back in the day you know as these machines got really old um, it's just like well just just get it going sort of thing do it cheap and that's what happened but uh, yeah it's now sorted so the next thing I'm gonna do I think is um, I'm gonna clean that whole effect because I don't want that to fail so uh, yeah let's do that next Plug swap from the old cable to the new cable, and I actually had a 3 amp fuse in there, so that's cool. But I thought I'd reuse this plug because, well, why not? It's uh, age appropriate, I suppose. But uh, yeah, let's crack on. So, a Hall effect that isn't actually too glued up, and actually work, looks worse from the camera than it actually is. But uh, yeah, we'll clean that off anyway and uh, take it from there. So, that's all done. It wasn't bad at all, to be fair, so that's really cool. Also giving it a bit of a dust out and a tidy up. Um, plastics wise, all looking good. Notice if you do take this apart, this does need to go onto there. Um, I've seen a couple of people actually that have left this floating about and wonder why the deck doesn't work. Um, all nice and tight. There's no plastic cracking. Um, so plastics on the top are probably going to be good, but we'll take probably take a look at that when we look at the front loading system anyway. But uh, it's all solid. I don't think this has been in a loft, stored in a loft. Um, storing them in a loft, the metal expands excessively uh, with the heat and the very cold, and it just causes all the plastic to start cracking. So... Uh, yeah, but this doesn't seem to have suffered with that. So it's actually pretty tidy under here. There's very little dust. So yeah, that's great. So next thing I'm going to do is um, sort out these connections. Um, I say sort out. It's basically just strengthen them. Um, putting the wire links in. I've shown that in many videos before. Um, so yeah, I'll get and do that now. Connections all done. Socket's nice and shiny. Back plate, nice and shiny too. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's crack on. So, front's off. Uh, we're missing a lot of screws, to be honest, and the screws that were in the bottom are way too long. Uh, I don't even know where they're from, to be honest, but uh, still. Um, so, we'll give this a dust out, uh, clean up the display. Um, dust all off there and then we shall have a look at this front loading system um, but 
yeah i mean it's it's turning out to be not a bad machine i really do suspect the heads are going to be bad but uh yeah we'll cross that bridge when we get to it so uh yeah let's crack on okay so i did get a bit carried away i've i've resurfaced the upper drum again it wasn't as shiny as i thought it was but it it needed doing definitely so maybe those heads aren't going to be too bad but uh, time will time will tell um so next thing is the um front loading system so let's take the belt off and disconnect the connector out of the way and then the five screws and the screw down here is actually missing which is interesting so let's take this one out um, like I think I said before that there, there seem to be an awful lot of screws missing out of this and they, they the ones that are in there are quite a bit longer than I'd expect so uh yeah that's that's interesting and this one is actually completely wrong uh, for this deck so it is almost like they've just oh yeah it's, it's actually a self-tapper um so yeah it's obviously been a part um let's take that out and uh yeah it's looking pretty tidy underneath so that's good so uh, yeah, let's move the machine out of the way and have a look at this front loading system. Okay, so this is a bit odd. Um, that gears has fallen off, which is off here. That's in there fine, <clears throat> but that isn't there. Um, and I don't know whether I can slip that on. I think I can quite easily actually, without causing any damage so that's on so that's a good start so what's happened here so this won't be timed in itself but of course this will be um, so somewhere there's a timing hole which is there yeah, so I've basically got this so it's it's in its sort of timed position then. Um, so, and that's through this hole here. And it goes right the way through. See what cuts through there. The washers, um, the gears, and straight through the, the chassis of the, the actual front loading system. And on this side, Similar sort of thing is straight through there, and you can see on the top there that it's perfectly aligned. So let's get this back on. Ah, oh, split. Gear has actually split. So that's probably all that's wrong with it. Um, probably what I'll do is I'll glue this. And then I'll put something around it just to keep it together. Um, but uh, yeah, and after I repair that, don't think I've got another one. I mean, other than the one that's on the good front loading system. So uh, yeah, it's going to have to be a repair. So uh, yeah, I'll do that next. Okay, so while I wait for the glue just to fully harden on the um, front loading system, I thought we'd just double check what's This is all like, um, actually not that bad. Centre gear is a bit, a bit on the tarnished side. I'll put just a tiny bit. Lubrication. And the other thing is I wanted to just have a look at the gear on the bottom that drives the loading uh, lacing rings 
because they have a habit of uh, splitting. Spring off. Yeah, the screw, which you can't quite see, but you will do in a sec. There we go. Yeah, it's got a spit on it. Yeah, there. I don't know whether that's enough for it to... No, seems, seems pretty solidly on still. Um, yeah, I don't know whether I want to change that or not. It's never been looked at before because the uh, cable tie at the back is still, still fixed. So let's get that out. There we go. Yeah, so you can see where the, the crack is at the bottom there. Um, so although this is still pretty firmly on, um, that is not going to last long, so that will start spinning around. So, uh, yeah, let's get and get that uh, gear changed. Okay, so tiniest bit of glue. Let's get it started first. And there, probably got a bit much. It's more about getting good coverage than putting lots of glue on. Like so many things. And then push it most of the way up. And that's good. I don't know what that is. I ignored it. <laughs> uh, that should be okay. Yeah, that's actually set already. Super. So uh, get this back in the assembly and uh, we should be good to go. Get this. This is actually, um, you can't just put that through, it's got to actually line up. There's a place for it to line up to. Make sure that gear is in position first. Like so. And that clips in. Um, so that's fine. Uh, the only thing you've got to watch, of course, um, yeah, I could have done with maybe being pushed up a little bit further, because it's going to possibly just strike, it might make it noisy. Um, yeah, what I might do is maybe put some some little washers in there just to pad that out a bit more. So it's certainly worth taking note of. There we go. Pull that back out. And the gear, and I will get a couple of washers. So I put a couple of washers on. Uh, one thing that did occur to me actually, if I really wanted to, I could glue one of these um, small washers actually on the bottom and then it would stop this slipping off um, when you take it apart. But I, I don't mind that to be honest. I don't mind that that's coming off. It's just a little bit fiddlier to um, 
take apart. Well, of course, that's not going to go past there, is it? So this has to come off. Put this on. Oh, yeah, it's fine. It was, um, oh, it was sort of catching on the solenoid, I think. So, tiniest bit of grease on there. So it runs nice. And uh, we should be able to put this down in. So we just have to be a bit careful, like I say, of that one gear. But once it's sort of most of the way down, it's actually fine anyway. Um, it will just relocate or locate properly as it drops it drops in. It's just so, so you don't sort of lose it. it. Doesn't fall off and fly into obscurity. Solenoid way to assembly spring and then put that over so it's on a bit of plastic goes to this side it's actually quite difficult to do so then screw with the washer at the back and oh, well, this makes a huge amount of difference if you get it the wrong way around. Um, I'll try and put things back the way I found them if I can possibly help it. Screw with large washer back, screw with shake proof washer at the front and we should be somewhere near. Magic. Okay, so uh, let's get the front loading system back in. Okay, so I'm giving it a little bit of a clean up as well. Let's get that belt so it doesn't get in the way. But, um, you know, we shall see. So it is actually slightly loaded. Still not. It, to me, it just doesn't seem quite aligned, even though I've, I've used the, um... Yeah, you see? It does, doesn't quite look right. It's almost like it's a tooth out. Oh no, it looks fine. So you see, see through there. Uh, just a belt. I'm going to get that to work. So that one. That one. And that one. Let's try this with a screwdriver. Um, that should go through there. Which it does. That goes through there. Which it does. And that goes through there. Which it does. Fine, so it must just literally be, I've got this in the wrong place. Um, which means I've got this in the wrong place. So obviously I've glued the other side. So I need to pull this side off, which is going to be a barrel of laughs. Is it? I think it's, I think it is only two come out screws are falling out now so it's actually not a bad thing okay so that's now free Everything else is lined up. Um, so the doors aren't actually, doors aren't set up correctly, so possibly we might have done that for no reason. 
Um, because if that's so that's all lined up. Put a screwdriver in just to keep that lined up. This then should line up, which it doesn't. Um, just get it so the basket's in the right place or the carriage. that is all completely and utterly correct so um, these doors aren't correct so just push back on this just so it can locate the doors correctly Actually gone in or not? No, they didn't. I think it goes that way, maybe. Got that right, or is that is it that way? It's actually a slightly different clip to I'm used to. That's it. It's actually in the wrong way. Uh, I didn't see any of that, but that clip was actually pointing with the the risen bit pointing this way. I can't really move it very easily at the moment because I don't want to knock the timing out again. Uh, so Up for put it on the right way, doesn't it? Well, let's get get rid of some of that horrible grease as well. So we'll actually locate before it meshes with the gear. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's on. So that hopefully now that is actually all straight now. Um, so doors are looking, but yeah, it's straight now. So it was all just a little bit out. Um, I'm still not terribly sure what I actually did there, but uh, anyway. Yeah, so let's just get this put back in. I, th I think we'll be fine. Put that in. Make sure the belt is fine. Um, screws. Screwdriver. Does help. So in theory, you don't actually have to take your screws right out. In practice, I always find that's a bit of a faff if you don't. Because it slides. Once it's... Um, back let's put these screws inside in first actually uh, before we tighten those ones on the top because it's going to push the thing back super so i think uh well let's put the belt on Just give it a tiny bit of tension. Don't need much. Don't over tighten the screw. 
just enough just to hold it. Uh, I think we're about ready to try this. Okay, so here goes. Um, power it on, I've put the front cover on as you've noticed. Uh, so hopefully we'll be all right. So far so good. Let's see if that front loading system is okay. Cool. Wind is good. Bearing's a little bit noisy. Only a tiny bit. So play. And we actually have nothing. Uh, yeah, nothing at all. Um, wonder, because it's near the end of the cassette, whether there's nothing actually on it. It's all sounding good. Oh, gosh. Ah, there we go. Oh. Okay. Uh... Stand by while I just get another cassette because this one's um, this one hits copyright. Well, that's that's working really well. I actually found a Betamax HG cassette. I love these cassettes; they just look so good. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, let's try pause. It's a normal sort of. thing, Q, um, and review. Gosh, it's really nice, isn't it? Um, tracking left, does starting to break up, tracking right. Oh, it's lovely. It's a really good machine. There's me thinking the hairs are going to be really worn, and they're fine. Um, so, yeah, what a great machine. Um, I mean, I don't doubt it's had quite a bit of use, I think, but it's perfect. Let's try eject. Bubbly. Yeah, it's going down absolutely fine. One thing I noticed, it's... Oh no, it's fine. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, I did give the tape path a bit of, bit of a clean as well, and it was filthy dirty. I mean, I will say, I don't think the camera does this justice. Uh, most of that was actually off the capstan. It's really, really dirty. Um, some of it was off the, um, off the pinch roller as well. The rest of the tape path wasn't too bad, to be fair, but uh, yeah, really just very grimy. Um, so, yeah, uh, I will give this a test, give it a run, and um, obviously put the top cover back on it. Um, I'll be intrigued to see how that performs. I'll see how hot it gets. Um, could do with one of those IR cameras really just to see how effective that that different um insulator is on the S str but uh, yeah really pleased with that so uh hope you enjoyed this one um that was so over the moon because this did look like a really rough machine but it's actually really great um after all of that work done i suppose but uh yeah, just very, very pleased to get another Sony Betamax up and running and running well. You know, I have no problems, you know, being confident that this will be a reliable machine now. 
So with that, thank you very much for watching. And uh, a like would be fantastic. Really, really does help. And um, subscribe too, because there's lots of fun stuff to come. So hopefully I will see you in another video. Bye for now.